people will get hung. For being a gypsy, you could get hung. You want it all going down your toes. It'd be easy to allow people to, you know, negate our existence and uh, it's a continual struggle for us because we have to justify our right to exist in this modern world. Robin Mill was a racial experiment site. It was founded in 1946 in an attempt to integrate the local gypsy traveller families who were resident in the area. They rounded up all tinker or gypsy traveller families, then they decided uh, which ones would be the most uh, suitable candidates for this experiment and they awarded the four huts. It was set up by the state party, by central government through the Department of Health, um, who authorised, you know, the finding of a location suitable for small groups of gypsy travellers. And the land was actually leased by a local landowner for a peppercorn rent of one pound per year. It was seen as a, a way of normalising people who were regarded as social misfits and you know the Nissen hut was used as a conveyor belt for families who could then be shipped into um, low grade council housing once they had proved they were of a suitable level. This just really demonstrates that, you know, the nature of the overcrowding and to think that, you know, up to 13 children would be forced into a one-bedroom department of this size. It's a bit like the Chinese cockle pickers down in Morecambe Bay, isn't it? Um, kind of reminiscent of, you know, that level of treatment and degradation in society. Um, here is where you know you had your kitchen and toilet uh, cheek by jowl so that um, inevitably the building was condemned and you know at one stage there was an asbestos partition between the living room and the um, bedroom, the one bedroom so I think you could probably still see the last vestiges of that hanging there from the roof, but I don't know where, at what, which point the asbestos was removed, we don't know, we were never informed. A team of joiners was sent in, you know, like a drove of joiners by the, the local authority to gut the innards of the hut so that it couldn't be repopulated or re-inhabited. They pulled out all the bedding and gutted the place, tore up the floorboards and you can see, you know, that the, the joiners just dumped the stuff here and that's it, it was left. If you look at the research that's been conducted in it, it states that uh, families would tend to congregate and so the connection between the family placed in the housing and you know the wider family group was never totally severed and that's why it was regarded as a failure because you know they retained links with uh, the traveling fraternity when my father came down they camped on the show green as well which is now the site of log basket this water here masks a, a murky secret, you know, the fact that um, the gypsy travellers who were camped here received very little notice to remove their possessions and, you know, 
the hydro board actually flooded the scheme and gave them something like two minutes warning. So, you know, beneath the water are deposited their cars, their effects, you know, their accoutrement. So they just had to race off and leave everything effectively. Must have been a very scary experience, but it just shows you, you know, the the contempt in which gypsy travellers are held and, and treated in, in Scotland, and, you know, how things haven't really moved on. I think that it's a cultural heritage site and, you know, it would be easy to just bulldoze the chalet there and pretend that, you know, racial experiments of this nature never happened in civilised Britain. But it's a reminder to people in Britain of how, you know, the litmus test of any civilised and democratic nation lies in the treatment of its Roma population. And it's because the Gypsy Traveller, this is the truth, they would either turn the cheek they're so docile, you know, the, but then there's some of us who's not going to be docile. But, I mean, it's inbred in, oh, okay, then we'll just stay here, we'll go for the putus, and we'll be quiet, we'll not, we'll not see anything. But then there's there's just some who just can't, you, you see so much injustice is getting done out there, and see who's sticking up for us, where can we go? So you've got to start doing it yourself. Probably, um, I think it's just a show of, uh, you know, dissatisfaction to continue the struggle for human rights, for recognition, you know, and for a bit of respect as human beings, you know, who ought to be treated in a more dignified manner. Here we are then, folks, justice. Solidarity. Yes, yeah, solidarity and justice for just <laughs> travellers. <laughs> But see, there's other people getting injustice all over, the whole over Scotland, and they don't exist either, so this is to give them a voice. So we don't have a voice here, and everybody can see us. Can you imagine the other people who put it into sites, they didn't have a voice and they can do what they like with them, like little concentration camps. The Scottish Socialist Party gives full back into any ethnic minority that seeks equality in Scotland. We believe that Scotland should be a welcoming place, somewhere that people from different cultures, different historical origins, different ethnic uh, groups and uh, outlooks should all have the opportunity to lead their lifestyle and integrate to whatever extent they want, but also have their separate and distinctive lifestyles. So I think that it's an absolute disgrace that uh, gypsy travellers in Scotland who themselves say they're the oldest ethnic uh, group in Scotland are being denied recognition as such. I don't think we're any closer to being recognised as an ethnic minority because... No one wanted to invest any money in you know, providing gypsy travellers with appropriate accommodation. I actually specifically asked for more culturally appropriate accommodation because I don't think, you know, um, that a chalet is something I would readily associate with my culture. Now, I asked for a caravan to replace, you know, the, the run-down, dilapidated caravan I have there. And that was poo-pooed as unacceptable the state's obviously in no position to dictate the terms of the agreement, so they should be free to live in a caravan, a teepee, a yurt, or some eco-friendly alternative, you know, if I so wish. People can't see us from below, and they can't see us because of the wood, you know, because of the trees as well, so we're, you know, it's a bit of a social portier hidden away behind Pitlochry and Bloom, the image, you know, the locals want to project of the town. With 
the passage of time, um, there's been more and more encroachment upon us, and you know, land has been put to use for uh, it's been converted into car parks. Um, you know, we've got a new community hospital at the other side. There are buses flying up and down there all the time now. Where can I see Bob and Mill in 20 years' time? I think it'll be a very different scene in 20 years' time. Um, I think it'll be here, but, you know, it'll probably be run more like a prison camp, like a compound with, um, you know, prisoner of war huts on it. That's what I would equate it to. So, you know, you can see how they started that. In many ways, the treatment intended for the, the residents of Bob and Mill was along the lines of prisoners of war. You know, when it was set up in 1946, and that has never really altered to any great extent.